Hey y'all, welcome back to the Rob the Savage Podcast. Got a special guest here today, another real estate mobile, Miss Casey Howard. <laughs> What's going on? Man, hey, you doing your thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Doing your thing, doing your thing, man. So look, we're gonna dive into this. Okay. Just tell the audience who is Casey Howard. Casey Howard is a young entrepreneur here in the Nashville area. I am involved in the community heavily. I'm 22. Um, I am just a person who likes to move and shake around and be involved as much as I can. And yeah, that's who I am. Real estate, nonprofit, uh, anything community is what I love to do. So I love people. Okay. Okay. Well, shoot. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's dive even deeper. So, <laughs> where are you from originally? I'm from Nashville originally. Uh, my people, uh, they're from, my dad is from Indiana. My mom's from here. And so, yeah, born and raised Nashville. More in particular, Murfreesboro. But, okay, okay. Yeah, Murfreesboro, Nashville. Okay, okay. Yeah. What high school? I was homeschooled. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah, I was you homeschooled. You knew to the world, yeah, okay. Yeah, just a little bit. I was homeschooled because I wanted to start work early. So okay, okay. I was more so wanting to go ahead and get the entrepreneur stuff rolling. And so I was opted to be homeschooled. Okay, okay. Wait, yes. Which university you chose after that? I didn't go to college. Oh, you did? Okay. I didn't. Okay. After I graduated, I ran into real estate. Oh, you're a monster. <laughs> Monster, yeah, but that's smart. You yeah, no, no student loan debt, none of that. So you good? No, my dad's been doing it for about twenty five plus years, and so okay. I just kind of took the blueprint that was already there. Hey, I love it. I love the, the legacy. <laughs> Absolutely, the most legacy. Deaf, most deaf. So, okay, okay. Well, so we got that party in a short period of time. You know, you're twenty two. That's that's amazing that you. You did your thing like that. Yeah, I'll be tw I'll be twenty three in July, but I know I'm still young, so I'm still figuring. I've been able to do a lot at a young age, but still figuring it out and enjoying the process. Well, that's good, man. You yeah. have a lot of young folks who watch this and be inspired. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's I love young working with young people, so it's okay. my thing. Okay, okay. Well, shoot. Outside of your pops, yeah. What what's another factor that got you into real estate? Um, really, I know I didn't want to go to school. So that was okay. one thing I knew I didn't want to go to school. I never really been a school gal. I more so wanted to just jump in. I like to work. So okay. I've not, I've figured out early that I like to work. Yeah. And so since I didn't want to go to school, um, and I'm kind of just did a process of elimination. It was already there. It's like, well, real estate it is. I can do what I want to do with the community stuff through real estate. Okay. Uh, it's easy, went to school, get done, graduate. So really just, it just made more, it made the most sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, what made you so passionate with the, outside of real estate, you say you do a lot in the community. Yeah. Especially the nonprofits. What drew you to that? So what drew me to that is my, I grew up very, I grew up privileged. Okay. So since okay. I grew up privileged. At least you admit it. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. Okay. And so, um, I, but I also always uh, wanted to. My dad made us give back a lot at a young age. So we didn't do Christmas. Okay. We didn't do a lot of okay. stuff. So he instead of giving us gifts all the time, he always made us get more so involved in the community. I like that. And so uh, at an early age, I had a passion for just being involved in the community and wanted to help other people. And so... Um, that's kind of how I got started. He already had a nonprofit. The nonprofit was around 25 plus years. Okay. okay. So once I got of age, um, and what's was the name of the nonprofit? Alert that, CDC. Uh, what now? Alert CDC. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So once he already had alert, and so um, once I got of age, I just took it and ran with it, mm. and I've been doing it for seven years. Man, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I'm gonna introduce you to my boy, Otis Carter. He okay. Has his own nonprofit called Two Hundred Man Standing. Okay. That I've been actually helping him out with and, and volunteering with. Uh, we we hit the, the hoods in Nashville and we give out uh, birthday. Uh, that's a birthday. I'm sorry. Uh, backpack drives. Uh -huh. Community cleanups. So mm -hmm. it's it's something I think you'll like. Yeah, that's your dope. Too. Oh yeah, that's dope. My uh, so alert. I love being involved, like going out and actually doing stuff. So mm -hmm. I do that. So. I'm involved in so much, but alert. Right, right. <laughs> alert. Yeah, we want you to tell, they tell it all. Just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the community stuff, I, I'm a Rotarian. I'm okay. uh, on several nonprofit boards. Um, alert in particular, though, I focus on family, fitness, and finances. So 
We focus on family education. Mm -hmm. um, I work with a lot of schools, alternative schools. Okay. So I go in with the kids and do like a pantry for like uniforms because most of the times mm -hmm. when the kids go there, they can't afford the uniform because they didn't right. necessarily plan to be there. Right, right, right. So we go in, do that, and then we also um, bring in influence for people like yourself, okay. different persons to talk to the kids. I'm working on a program right now where kids who are athletes. Okay. And so teaching them supporting plan A is what I called it. Okay. So I don't necessarily want to discourage them and say, well, you you know, it's only this amount of people that make it actually make it. But we need to figure out what we can do to support the dream that you already have. So whether that's real estate, investment, stocks, just learning something to help you. So if something were to happen, you get hurt or something like that, you already have a plan in place. Plan B is always something that I'm glad you said that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm big on telling the youth, especially high schoolers and current college players, to have a plan B. Uh, all our dreams to make it to the pros in, in whatever sport it is, but it's such a small amount to get to go there. You gotta have a fallback plan. And um, that's one thing that our youth is not knowing. They, they're thinking that they're the best of best, which yeah, it's good to have to think like that, yeah. but you gotta have that plan B or you'll be up Shit's Creek. Yeah. Right. Well, I want to explore that, explore that because I call mine supporting plan A. Okay. So my whole thought process was, I don't, I believe that a lot of us, we don't know that we can't do something until somebody tells us we can't. Okay. So as a child, you don't know that you necessarily can't become president, doctor, mm -hmm. lawyer until somebody taints you from their own experiences with life right? or what, you know, what have you. So I call it supporting plan A because I don't necessarily want to tell them what they can't do. Right, right. But because I believe you can do whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that you have something to support that dream. So that's why I don't call it a plan B, but a plan A, plan supporting a. plan A. I like that. The plan A yeah, <laughs> should be your first step. <laughs> yeah, because if you have plan B, then you don't really believe in plan A. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay, well, how do you see yourself expanding out? Your business. I know you, you know, saying you're heavy in Murfreesboro. Mm -hmm. like you got Nashville too, but what's your future goals in the next five years with your, with your business? Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, yeah. that, it makes my hair hurt even thinking about it. Oh, but, it. <laughs> <laughs> but my plans for the next five years is to really just, I want to be impactful as much as I can. I'm more so now getting involved, um, do a lot of speaking engagements, mm -hmm. traveling, speaking, and helping uh, other persons with their nonprofit. So I'm actually helping people now start to build their own and what that looks like for them, whether they're in the, whatever arena they're in with their business, but also helping them kind of build what they want to do from the ground up, whether it's real estate, whether you're doing consulting, whether you're working at McDonald's, wherever you are, just right. getting that plan together okay. and seeing how you can best be successful where you are. Okay. So my plan is just to be impactful. <laughs> just be impactful with everything I do. I don't want to necessarily influence people, but I want to be impactful and uh, be a person that people can look at and see that you're doing and, and can believe that they can do it from watching me. Right. And so with real estate, I love real estate, but kind of branching out and wanted to be more so involved with people now and being tangible and giving them information. It's all about being so, intentional. Exactly. Um, you said something right then that I think that a lot of I you and to be honest with you, even you know, I'm still young myself, I'm thirty four, but I'm still putting <laughs> yeah. that people need to get into the speaking engagement because mm -hmm. once they learn that they won't be so nervous when they talk in front of people. Mm -hmm. Um if you knew me twelve years ago, I wouldn't dare be on the camera. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be in front of talk. But I had to grow and then also just uh put myself out there. Like I call myself the plug. You know, that network, I'm mm -hmm. hard on that. But I had to get over that spirit factor of like talking to folks. And one thing I will say, not to be racial, but I I knew I could talk amongst any crowd when I was amongst a whole bunch of white folks. Yeah. And was able to like speak and not stutter and all that. Mm -hmm. I, so I know when I get around my own folks, I can be lax, you know, mm -hmm. joke a little bit. But uh yeah. I think it's definitely like that, especially with me being raised around Caucasian people mm -hmm. all the time. It was more so obviously for me. I was more oh. so nervous to come around my people. Right, right. And so I was like, ah, I don't know how they're going to perceive me. I didn't been raised by you Caucasian folks. They got me. Like, I say words like gal. People be looking at me like, what? They're like, yeah. Well, you know, I still, <laughs> even I still say gal. It's just when I leave Nashville when uh, yeah. like, you say gal. But I will say this, man. You know, you're a homeschool agent, go to college. One yeah. thing that did help me, 
I went to all black high schools, all black schools, period, my whole life, except for my oh, two years really? in Arizona. I was in junior college. I was a white school. But when I transferred to TSU, and to piggyback on what you said about the public speaking aspect of being around mm-hmm. young folks, yeah, TSU is going to put you in that file, in the HBCU, because mm-hmm. all your classmates are look just like you. Mm-hmm. They jokesters. So, but again, I'm used to that. I grew up my whole life around that, and all I'm me being so so yellow. I've always been an elephant in the room. <laughs> so I had yeah. to, like, you know, uh, uh, get past that. So, but my fear was just doing it around white folks. Mm-hmm. And once I mastered that, I'm like, oh, I'm good around my people. Let yeah. Me. And we're honest, too. That's what I love about yeah. That's what I love about being around people. It's so honest. And so I know where I'm at when I'm when I'm speaking. <laughs> if they either smile or looking at me like I'm crazy. You know, like, you didn't mess up with like, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. For real. Yeah. Well, shoot, man, look, where can the people find you? What's your Instagram? I mean, your social media, yeah, anything. Yeah, so y'all can find me on Instagram at the T H E K C with a K, K A Y C E Howard on Instagram. YouTube, the same thing, Casey Howard. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at on YouTube and Instagram. And LinkedIn, y'all can put me on LinkedIn too. Oh, you yeah, can't forget about the LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn. Give me y'all LinkedIn too, Casey Howard. Most of most of y'all heard it, man. Y'all want to find her. Y'all got her platform. <laughs> Please tap in. Uh, another great uh, interview going down here, man. I love to have you back and yeah, see how your sure. progress has been going. Yeah, for sure. What's so, up? Up? yeah, for sure. With the real estate and everything, real estate. Um, we gonna talk. We'll talk more about real estate when I come back. But today, kind of just flow what we flow with. So, I'm cool with that. What's up? What's up? Y'all heard it. <laughs>